most importantly for us to understand that while we're in the place of prayer, what must be paramount in our minds is the will of God. Amen. Jesus said, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we hallow him, as we reverence him, it's first his will. It's first about his will. So make prayer a place that is only about what you're thinking about, what is urgent to you. Hallelujah. Let the king's agenda be paramount on your mind. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let the king's agenda be paramount on your mind. What are you Amen. saying, Lord? What would you have us do today? Yes. What do you want us to accomplish? Hallelujah. The son, hallelujah, asked the father, Sure, Christian says, Lord, what would you have us do today? What is on your mind concerning our homes, concerning our nations? Hallelujah. Concerning the day. Hallelujah. What do you want me to do? What do you want me? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to speak to? When you have the king's agenda on your mind, everything else will be added to you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. He gave Hallelujah. us the key to everything else that we are looking for. If we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added. You know, I know, hallelujah. Amen. Trouble sometimes leads us to God. But as you come, hallelujah, and he now shows us what must really lead us to him, may we accept it, hallelujah, follow his orders. And I can assure you, everything else will be sorted out in his time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is no situation that is bigger than him. Hallelujah. Absolutely none. Hallelujah. So we don't come to see if he can do it or he can't do it. In the name of Jesus, we lay it at his feet. And we know that he will do it. Paul says, we know, hallelujah, that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask a thing. You know, what was going on in my mind is sometimes when we think that our own, you know, what we need from the Lord is so big, he has greater in store for us. I hope we understand that. That means you know, the Lord, I need 10,000. He's thinking about 10 million pounds. Lord, I need 1,000 pounds. He's thinking about 100 million. He, God's mind is just beyond our understanding. His thoughts are far higher and way higher than our thoughts. His ways way higher than our thoughts. Your mind cannot imagine what he has prepared for you. So the best thing when you don't, when, my God, when you have a revelation of that, when you would really say, Lord, let your will be done. Yes, Father, I have your word. Ah. When you really understand that scripture or that revelation that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered to the heart of man what God has prepared. You wouldn't be in a hurry to just say, Lord, give me this. You would say, Lord, let your will be done concerning this matter. What let would you have me do concerning, concerning this matter? This matter. Yes. Thank you, Father. And when he speaks to us, we have hearts. You know, when, when he speaks, sometimes I, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. Well, because that's God. That's the Lord. Amen. He's not a human being that will give you something that you would understand. So we now again lean on him for understanding. That's why the Holy Spirit is a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He's a spirit of knowledge. He's a spirit of counsel. He's a spirit of might, strength. Amen. So we then lean back on him to enable us to do the things that he has now revealed to us. So it's a life that is totally involved in mean oh my god that is circulated by him everything is about him thank you jesus if we can have that on this night god your light indeed will shine like the morning sun it would break out and you will wonder why others would also wonder what happened it's because we totally yielded to his will amen yes Thank you, really what we need to have an understanding 
I pray for revelation knowledge by the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that the eyes Amen. of understanding will be enlightened. Amen. Amen. So when you're thinking about 10, God is thinking about millions. Amen. You're thinking beyond even what you can even imagine. Just always remind yourself, God is thinking about things that I cannot even imagine. <laughs> so Lord, when I present this to you, thank you because you're thinking about, you're thinking beyond my imagination concerning this matter. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. And then we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that thing to us. In fact, I'm, asking, I'm hearing him say, ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart for what he's about to reveal. Oh. Oh, huh? Yeah. Because there are things that are revealed, and sometimes because, oh my God, I asked God to reveal. And when I saw it, I just started to run. No. When your heart receives capacity, hallelujah, Amen. for what God would reveal, my God, you will stand and say, Yes, Lord, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yes, Lord, I'm ready for I'm what ready. you're about to reveal. I'm ready. Hallelujah. So, Holy Spirit, we ask that you prepare our hearts. Yes, prepare Lord. our minds. Yes, give us capacity to receive what would be revealed to us. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Give us capacity. Yes. Give us capacity. Because Jesus, you know, I was talking about forgiveness. Jesus was stretching Peter. He stretches us. The Lord stretches us. It's not looking at, my God, the the mere things that we can produce. No. He wants us to receive his mind. That's why he wants to dwell within us. He's not giving us angels. He's giving us himself. My God. Can we meditate on that? He gives us himself. Thank you, He's not giving us angels. He's not giving us some aliens. No, he's giving us himself. That's how much he honors us. So how do we honor him in return? It's to ask for understanding, to ask for insight. Yes, it's to ask for it. Lord, help me to understand. Don't boast in not understanding. Boast in getting understanding of the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah because there's glory glory my father glory that is available to every single one of us as sons of God we must manifest hallelujah his divine glory in the name of Jesus amen in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen, amen. So in reflection of what we went through, um, the letters that we went through last week, amen. I want to welcome all the ministers in the room, everyone here with us today. Um, God bless you, it's great to see you here. In Jesus' name, I appreciate all of you. In the name of Jesus, we know that God is taking us to higher levels. In the name of Jesus, greater is ahead of us. Somebody declare, greater is ahead of me. Greater is ahead of me. Hallelujah. Greater is ahead of me. Greater is ahead of me. You can type it in the chat. You can declare it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can unmute your mic, whatever it is. But make sure you say, greater is ahead of me in the name of Jesus. Greater is ahead of us in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking us to greater dimensions in the name of Jesus. We go in Him from glory to glory. Amen. Your life cannot remain the same if you encounter God. It must not remain the same. Don't settle for for the same. Hallelujah. Every time we encounter him, we must go from glory to glory, strength to strength, higher levels to higher levels in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4. Because we saw, hallelujah, how the Lord spoke to the different churches. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, this shows us the mind of God for his church, his family. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He wants us to work in unity. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. He wants us to live as children of light. He wants us to be submitted to one another. Hallelujah. Walk in unity. Live as children of light. Amen. 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 We must Amen. Him. Yesterday he gave us a word which I was just able to summarize. But how do we honor him in the marketplace? Mm. Hallelujah. Honoring the Lord in the marketplace. <coughs> Where's the marketplace? Anywhere outside of your door. As soon as you step out of your door, you're in the marketplace. Hallelujah. Yeah. We must honor him at all times. In Jesus' name. So can I please have some readers? Hallelujah. This morning, let's read. Let's read God's word. It washes us. It helps to renew our minds. Amen. Four verses each. Four verses each. Four verses each so that we can have. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which, with which you were called, with all loveliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, and endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in a one hope of your calling. Thank you. Zavanisa Chika, praise God. She, is, she came ready. Who's the next reader that came ready? Four verses each, please. One, 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 one baptism. New King James Version, that's okay. Go ahead, put the mic. Okay, ma'am. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and, and you all. Seven, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and then gives to men. Nine, now in this he ascended, what does this mean? But he also first ascended into the lower parts of the earth. Thank you, sir. Next reader, please. That's nine to verse twelve. Okay. Now this he ascended. What does it mean? Well, that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended from above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Next reader, please, from verse 13 to 16. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. I'll just read 16 because I can't remember. From whom the whole body joined and knit together 
by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Thank you. You don't mean to read that. Thank you. Next reader, please, from verse 17 to 20. From him are divided bodies. Whoever started reading, please read. The next person, stand by. like to read, please and read. You'd like to come onto the stage, please put your hand up. What happened to the person who started to read? Wondering, baby. I'll read, man. 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the, fut- in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of their ignorance that is in them, because of their blindness of their heart. 19. Who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness and to walk all uncleanness with greediness. 20. But you have not so learned Christ, but you have not so learned in Christ. If, 21, if indeed you have been, if indeed you have heard, heard of him, and heard of, and taught by him, as the truth in, as the truth in Jesus. Okay, we're meant to read till 20. Okay. Oh, so we did the next reader. Can I have the next reader read from 21 to 24, please? Thank you. Joint ready to supply. Reader ready to read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 21 to 24. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. 22, you were taught with regards to your formal way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its its faulted desires. Verse 23, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. 24, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Can you read 23 and 24 again, please? To be made new in the attitude of your mind. 24. And to put on the new self, created to be like God, in the true, in the true righteousness and holiness. have two more people read that same 22 and 23 again. Please listen, 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 listen. If you're sleeping, wake up. If you're dozing, or sit up. Hear this. It's very important that we hear this. And I have two other people read same 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Can I read in the same terms in the book? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is an idea now. 23 says, To be made new in the attitude of your mind, 24, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Thank you. Yes, can I have uh, somebody read from the Amplified Version? Read first 22, 23, and 24 from the Amplified, please. Pastor Price, I've been at work, and so I'm sorry, where are we reading at? And I can read. Ephesians chapter 4. If you can find the, the Amplified Version, please. Ephesians chapter 4. 22, 23. 24. 22, 
through 24. Okay, let's see. I'm there. Okay, hold on. I'm on King James. Let me switch to Amplify. Alright, let's see. Have the amplified fashion. Can I read it, please? Yeah. Okay. Strip yourself of your former nature. Put off and discard your old or renewed self, which characterize your previous manner of life, and become corrupt through lust and desires that spring from delusion. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind having a flesh, mental, and spiritual attitude. 24. And put on the new nature, the re regenerated self, created in God's image, God-like, in truth, righteousness, in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, so amplifies. You must have read the classic. Let me read the other version. Is anybody else ready? Or I'll read I'm ready now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And so the amplified version that I have that I hope is the correct one says, starting from 22, that regarding your yes. previous way of life, yes. you put off your old self, completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, 23, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a... Go ahead. Okay. Um, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, 24, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like in the righteous and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you. Um, New Living Translation, Mama Deborah. Um, it says here, 22, throw off your old sinful nature and your full way of living, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies and let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. Amen. Amen. Then we just love the word of God and the different translations. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, amen. Okay, so that was 25 that you read. Okay. But instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Total submission. Total submission. And put on your new nature. Amen. Created to be like God. To be like God. Truly righteous and holy. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Can we have the next reader please read from verse 25? Um, oh, hallelujah, what a version. Just continue to read from New Living Translation, please. Okay, 25. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all part of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to devil. Mm. Read verse 27 again. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Amen. In Proverbs it says that anger lies in the bosom of fools. It gives a foothold. It gives a legal ground to the enemy. Pray that we will not walk in anger. Amen. We would have self-control in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we have the next reader please read from verse 28 to the end. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live, Remember, he has identified you mm. as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Great verse. verse again, please. But, okay. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, at verse 30. Huh? Verse 30. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Amen. Go ahead. Okay. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all type of evil behavior. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. My God, but instead be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Lord, we thank you for your word that we have read this morning. I'm going to ask if anyone has a response to what we have read. Hallelujah. Please feel free, just a couple of minutes will do so before we close the room. This is the word of the Lord. What have you heard him speak to us this morning? There's some things that we have read over, which is very important for us to meditate. And we have been called to our life to live like our Father. Pastor Price, if I may something, um, many years ago, Lord, like this bitterness. Uh, even in my heart, you know, we people and you have difficulties. We know we shouldn't do things against God's will, but you get so angry and you get so frustrated. And, you know, in your quiet time, you will always smile at people. And then when you come back home, you are so frustrated and you, you live the opposite way. And in my own life, God, when he called me in 2005, he commanded me in a hearable voice to amend my life. And in my journey, it's not a one off, you know, like it's something that plays out every single day. And the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, he guides us in truth. But then also, um, in he, the Lord one day laid Hebrews 12 on my heart. Uh, again, the bitterness story. And this is not just bitterness. It is this Many different roots connection. that actually defiles the body. And I just want to read mm. Hebrews 12 um, because we have to get rid of a corrupt life. Mm. So, can can you, hear you hear me? Um, yes. You know, like to get rid of a corrupt life. And it's written there, it says from verse 4, uh, I think yeah, it's our power failures again. Sorry about that. Can I speak? Go ahead. Um, sorry, yeah. Okay, sorry. We've got load shedding again. Um, 
Hebrews 12 verse 14 says, Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord and look after each other so that none of you fail to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. So, you know, God wanted me to get rid of all bitterness in my life. Mm. And it was not easy. But I had to bring all of those things before the throne of God. And I had to forgive a lot of people. And I had to forgive a lot of, even yourself. I had to forgive myself as well. And I'm grateful today because bitterness is a terrible thing. So I'm sorry now, maybe the message didn't go through nicely, but I'm sure the Holy Spirit will bring it to people to understand. And um, we need to live in freedom and it is possible, but we must allow the Holy Spirit to wash and purify. And this is a daily story. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 We heard, we heard that. We heard that. Amen. You see, this is what happens when you, when you get into in close proximity with the Lord, he would re- begin to reveal ourselves to us reveal ourselves to us and as he reveals ourselves to us we must we must respond in obedience and in repentance which is turning away from what he reveals or turning away from Mm -hmm. that old life and making a decision not to go back to it amen amen so he's speaking to our hearts never ever again speaking to our hearts that all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, the amplified says, um, the amplified version says, perpetual animosity. Who are you not speaking to? Who are we not speaking to? Resentment, strife, fault, finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse. Malevolence, be kind and helpful to one another, tender hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. We're stepping into a new day. Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody else has something else to share. Blessings to you, Mr. Chica. Blessings. I was sharing something and one of my sisters here said, oh, you've come again. It's not me, it's the word of the Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Is there anybody else that is hearing what the Lord is saying to us? We must respond to his word. And I'm sure you're not sleeping. Sorry, Minister, um, Pastor Praise. Let me just quickly share something before I drop off. Um, the word that stood out for me was um, Ephesians 4.29 mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm going to read it in the AM, AMPC so it says let no foul or polluted language nor evil nor evil word nor unwholesome or worthless talk, talk ever come out of your mouth but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favour to those who hear it. Now, the reason that stood out for me, um, sometimes as children of God, we compromise on words. Mm-hmm. Um and I put my hands up. Last week, I, I used the word, um, I need to say it to put it in context. So I used the word bastard on somebody. And, um, and obviously, later on, I was feeling convicted by that word because I was not using it 
towards Satan. I was using it towards another believer. And it's not a word that comes out of my mouth. I don't, I would normally use those kind of words. And like I said, I felt convicted by it. So when I was now reading this just now, I was like, Lord, look at that. That was why I was convicted because it was no beneficial to the person. I was not speaking grace to the person. I was not, you know, I was, I was in a way being abusive, even though I acknowledge it later and I repented, but that should not have come out of my mouth in the first place. Mm. It shouldn't have. And I should know better. And like I said, I was even shocked with myself for using that word. Yes, I may use it when I'm praying, but and even then it's very rare. So we as believers, we have to also be very mindful of how we speak, especially when we're speaking to children of God, even when they have upset us. I mean, Ephesians 4 is loaded, is loaded with lifestyles you know how we live our life every day so um the, the second part of that scripture in 29 is obviously saying our speech should be something that edifies yeah and it should come with grace so it's just for us to be mindful of words that comes out of our mouth even when we're driving you know back in the days i confess i used to be one of those people that had a bit of a, a rage in the you know when i'm driving and i'm not saying i would say abusive thing but i also remember somebody pointing out to me and saying you always use the word stupid you know on people driving so again let's just be careful because other people are listening and because they're listening to us, they're like, oh, I thought you're a woman of God. You know, so why are you using those words? So I just thought I'd add that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chica. I just want to share my little experience that I had on Friday. Based on what you just said now, um, it allowed me to want to share that experience because I believe that uh, it would be more of an eye opener to help us as well, help me as well. And so on Friday, while I was having the attack with my vehicle coming to Lagos, I realized that at some point I was quite I was quite stressed out, and I almost yes, I used the I used that word that the chica used on my mechanic because I was so stressed out. And my friend said, "Oh, but Mike, don't speak that way." And I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just so stressed." She said, "I know, take it easy." So enemy knows your old life. He knows what can push you to the edge, what could make you be triggered. But now that you're a man of the spirit, you have to be more discerning. You have to allow your flesh not to be carried away by what's happening around you. And so I think the point I'm trying to make here is that I was, I was, I was almost carried away by the flesh and the situation that was happening because it was quite intense. And so even when we were in intense situations, I know we might lose ourselves by, by what's happening around us. Maybe we might be angry or overwhelmed once in a while and say things that are out of the ordinary. Christian things to say. And so, but I think the idea is to be very, very uh, spirit led always, no matter what the situation may be. You can afford to let the enemy catch you on off guard because it's, it's, it's looking for a way in mm. all the way. And it's looking for a way in almost every time. And so, it's looking for any, any simple loophole you, you give to him, he's going to come and accuse you for it. And so, I, 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 the point is to not allow anything to push you in a point of where you lose yourself to the situation or the scenario or the encounter. You have to always be in the spirit 24-7, always. Thank you, man. Then being in the spirit is also producing the fruits of the spirit. Being in the spirit is working in obedience. Being in the spirit is being conscious of who is in you. I just wanted to add that. Somebody said, being in should I be speaking in tongues all the time? Well, if you want to speak in tongues all the time, please go ahead and speak in tongues all the time. But really, it's honoring the Lord who dwells within us. And that's why um, the next verse says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So when somebody, physically, if somebody honoring uh, somebody that you have high respect for is in your car, is in your environment, and things that you, even though you want to say, in your your, your the consciousness of you would you would hold back, 
because of who is around you. So we must work in consciousness of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. So don't grieve him. The other version that we just read says, don't bring sorrow to him. So the things that we do that can bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit is like, a person has forgot that I'm here. They have they forgotten that I'm here. This is a life that really liberates us from sin. This is a life. This way, this mindset, this understanding would liberate us from sin. When you are conscious that God himself through his spirit dwells within us. So I would watch Amen. what I say, how I conduct myself. Not to be a hypocrite, but because I'm, I honor him. Because of respect. because of the worth that he's due, because we worship him. So that worship is not just singing a song and dancing and clapping and lifting up your hands and crying. It's what we do that shows that we honor, we worship him, the worth that we place on him, how we conduct ourselves. He's speaking to us. I'll take one more and we'll close the room. Um, I just want to say that um, this thing is a, it's a, it's a war between the spirit and the flesh because it's a package and it's a lot of packages. I say, do not, the, the, the things that we're not supposed to do as Christians, they're a lot. And it's really a war, you know. Mr. Chica really hit home by bringing the car experience because I'm sure for those of us to drive, this is something that we all face on a daily basis and um, the other day I went to shopping and I, I was on the right, I was reversing into a glass box, I can see the car behind me, I wasn't even moving, I was reversing. Your voice, well, your voice, can you? Sorry, well, and this, this angry old the guy with his wife in the car put, put his window down and started swearing at me. I bring my window down in rage. I don't know how it came out, all I said was, God bless you. Have a good day. And someone said, what did you say? I said this again. I put my hands together like I was praying. I said, God bless you. God bless you. Have a good day. And his response was shocked because when he said, what did I say? He thought I'd swat him. And because of the God bless you, he fired him up and he swore even harder because I think the person next to him must have thought, what did she say? And obviously he couldn't repeat what I had said to him. Didn't mean that when I got out of the car, I wasn't feeling I had done, I, I, that was the Holy Ghost because I thought, I, when I went the way to down so that I had a response, it's all that I knew what I was going to say, but I wasn't in the wrong, so I could have started the whole argument, but how the Holy Spirit just came out and just made me say, God bless you, up to today, I'm like, God, I know that was you, but it did not take the pain away at that point because it was almost like why was he even spraying at me, you know? And I was I was now battling with the Holy Spirit. Like, after I'd done, you know, and he drove up. And I was saying, God, you know, like, I was really, 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 really battling with the Holy Spirit. And right on into the shop until I even lost the, the carrier bag I was carrying. I carried it in there with me. I came, you know, because I was, I thought, I was saying, you hit cause of fire. You blessed us. Like, that costs you. And that was a scripture that kept repeating itself to me throughout the whole process. I was like, I was so, I had, it took me a while. By the time I got home, yes, I had come down and forgotten about the situation. My thing is, it's a war. You know, we, we, when we read the scriptures and we are, be perfect as Christ is perfect, we know, the, for the Bible to say we should be means it is a possibility. But there's a war between the spirit and the flesh. But when you're conscious that you agree with the Holy Spirit, and, and, and I believe it's it's a walk that it would manifest in itself and it would develop. But it takes a conscious decision. It takes a conscious effort. And it builds, your spirit builds over time. Like I said, when I wind that window up, God being my witness, I did not know what, I, I never had anything pre 
you know, because I did not even, I don't think at that point I really even knew what I had done. You understand to offend the person that was swearing at me. So I'd want, mind the window down to think, you cannot intimidate me because I haven't done anything. Do you understand? And then he started seeing this abuser. But what I was saying is so easy because even though I had blessed him and not cost him, but then anger came. I was, when I say I was, I was, I was fuming. Genocide, because I, you, you, as you say, so where, I mean, and this is where when we read the word and we portray it and we, 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 we share these things and we whatever, it's not that it's not a battle, but it's a conscious decision or, or, and it's a help of the Holy Ghost, I should say, really, because even with the consciousness, there are times we do sleep, there are times we fall and grace, I mean, we thank God for his mercy and his grace, but uh, I, I, I hand over to you and maybe you'll be able to help a bit on that. Okay, so um, we can read verse 26 and 27, but let's read it from the Amplified again, please. The Amplified version. Verse 26 mm-hmm. and 27, ma? Yes, please. Okay, it says, it's 26, it says, um, and, sorry, be angry mm-hmm. at sin, at immorality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior, yet do not sin, do not let your anger cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. Verse 27 says, and do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. Okay. Brother Mike, please read verse 26 and 27 with a passion translation. TPT. TPT. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yudon. Yes, ma'am. TPT. Mm. Okay. 26. And 27, please. Okay, 27 first. 26 and 27. Okay. Don't, but don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or be full for your revenge. Not even for a day. 27. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. Amen. That's it. Thank you, ma'am. When we, when I was um, on Friday, by the grace of God, um, the Lord gave me an opportunity to speak on um, forgiveness um, in the Singles and Married Club. And the last point that I shared um is reflecting on what verse 20 was is reflecting I'm looking for my notes it's reflecting on what verse 27 has spoken which says do not let don't give the slanderous accuser accuser the devil an opportunity to manipulate you um it's from it's from Second Corinthians chapter two, where Paul was um, dealing with um, um, unforgiveness in the in the church regarding a a particular brother, um, and I would I'd read it. Second Corinthians chapter two, ten and eleven says that if you've that if the passion says if you freely forgive anyone. Um, for anything then I also would forgive him and if I've forgiven anything and if I have forgiven anything I did so for you before the face of Christ so that we would not be exploited by the adversary Satan for we know his clever schemes another translation says we are not ignorant of the devil's devices um And why I've um, taken us to do these two verses is to let us know that um, we are being encouraged 
it's an emotion, anger is an emotion. And someone says, oh, can I gonna not get angry? Yes, it's an emotion. And as human beings, emotions will be um, demonstrated when things happen. That's why we cry. So you might not be angry at another situation, but you might cry at another situation. Or another situation that make you, might take you to a place of sadness. So see all of those things as emotions that are being expressed. Yeah? Um, so anger is another emotion. It's another emotion that is being expressed because of you be probably been feel felt that you feel that you've been taken advantage of or somebody has done something and now they are responding in that way but our response is what god is looking at that we can be angry but not at a place where we sin to the place where there is an adversary and i was i was sharing with us you know women okay i could see what my notes and i said Adversary and adversary is a legal term. It's a legal term where um, you have someone bringing a case against you in the court of law. So, what does the enemy do? He plays on our weakness or takes advantage. He takes advantage on our weakness. And that's what I would like us to be mindful of. So Satan would not show up and I'm Satan have come to attack you. He plays on your emotions. Emotions. Takes advantage. That there's some I, I know there's some anger in that person. So I'll just get someone to just get on their nerves. So I can have something to, you know, when you have fault finders, fault finders, I've, I've heard the Holy Spirit say, don't, don't be a fault finder because you are helping the devil to be an accuser to accuse. Leave the devil, I hear people now say, leave the devil to do his work, don't help him. He's always looking to place something, to have something on us. So when we have an insight of that, if we know that there is someone always waiting to see how you would respond see what you would do it's a spiritual thing you see this war that we are fighting brethren it's not always when you sleep at night and you see somebody chasing you you say oh, demonic attack that uh, that that's incident that happened is a demonic attack a thing that came to make you rage and and fall out of place the accuser is saying, ah, I, got, I, I got them, I got them, I got them. God, can you, can you see? There's something on her, there's something on him, there's something on them. The accuser, the adversary, waiting to take advantage. Yeah. Waiting to say, yes, I got them. They slipped. Because he can't get back to where he used to be. Can never. But thank God we have Jesus. Thank God we have the blood. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit. Thank God you and I can repent. And you and I can walk into a place of maturity. You and I can overcome. So what I will not focus on is the emotions. But I will focus on the fact that there's work in progress. There's work in progress. Amen. That I will not remain at that place where my emotions will lead me to a place where the enemy will take advantage. There is an enemy that is waiting to take advantage. And we must not give room So then I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. Walk on that emotion. You are bound the devil, if I can see. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When God is expecting us to walk in the spirit, it's because that, that process of producing evidence that the spirit of the Lord is within us 
and our spirit is producing fruits that demonstrate that he's within us makes you an overcomer. Keeps you in a place of strength. Keeps you in a place where there's no device that can be used against you. So daily we pray for strength. Daily we pray for strength. I used to be in that place where my emotions can take me to where it shouldn't take me. But I kept on saying, Lord, take away this anger from me and let me walk yes. in this spirit. It's a prayer. That's why we pray about everything. That's why we pray about everything. I can lift up a whole human being and put them down. If <laughs> I could before. I wouldn't do it again. Now he's taking me to a place where I can walk. Well, even if I'm in the car, somebody's in so I just put my mirror up and look like they don't even exist. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And then I tell myself, even if I'm speaking, they can't hear. That's what I tell myself. They can't, they can't hear what I'm saying. Maybe some, some of them can hear. But sometimes I say to myself, they can't even hear what I'm saying, so don't waste your emotions. I talk to myself. I talk to myself. You know, it's a walk. Yes, and that is very important. So talking to yourself and telling yourself because it was your words that came to me that you are not his problem. I think that was what made me overcome that day. I said he had something else that was doing him and he just took it out to me. You, you are not his problem. So thanks for, for saying that again, ma'am. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the prize I know we must finish, but uh, the Holy Spirit is laying scripture on my heart. Can I quickly share it? Go ahead. Um, it is, if you think about Cain and Abel, and uh, you look at Cain's emotions, mm -hmm. uh, how he acted and how he responded and what God said to him in Genesis 4, because Cain was very angry and he was looking dejected. He was feeling depressed. And then God said to him um, in Genesis 4 verse 6, Why are you so angry? And the Lord asked Cain, Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. Mm. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at your door, My eager God. to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. So God has given us that dominion. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Please read that again. He was so angry. I'll read you from verse 5. Uh, it's Genesis 4, verse 5. But he did not accept Cain and his gift. And this made Cain very angry. And he looked dejected. And God said, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. So we have to listen to our hearts, this door. If sin is crouching there, know that God is saying, you must control over that. So when I have that feeling, I say, Lord, this is not from you. Mm -hmm. Satan, get behind me. Like Jesus said to Peter. Uh, he didn't say, Peter, you're talking nonsense. He said, Satan, get behind me mm -hmm. because you are a dangerous trap. Mm -hmm. And that is what we must recognize. Yeah. We must listen to the Holy Spirit. He moves 24-7. Yeah. But if we give ourselves over to emotions, that is when we fall. I know I can testify about it. Mm. But thank you, Jesus, for being so patient with me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be so patient with us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, with all Amen. of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us not give room to the enemy. Don't give room. Amen. 
sin shall no more have dominion over us. And that's our offering. Amen. Amen. The fruit of the spirit that is called self-control. May we yield to the Holy Spirit and ask him to help us. You're still here. Ask him to help you in that area. So the Lord will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Emotions can be controlled. Amen. So don't feel guilty about, oh, God, angry. Yeah, just think about it. Amen. So emotions can be laughing. It can be excitement. It can be crying. It can be sadness. They're all emotions. So just understand. But they must not take control over us to a place of destructiveness or where the enemy can take advantage. It says, be angry, but do not sin. But do not sin. But do not sin. 